Here we have a classic knitting faux pas. I didn't take time to check my gauge. I got part way up this mitten and found that my gauge was considerably off. I ripped back to here uh, and re-knit the mitten. I'm now happy with the way it fits and the gauge of the fabric. However, I thought I could get away with the original cuff. And in fact, I really don't like the original cuff. So what I've done is knit a new one, new cuff on a smaller size needle. It's much nicer. So now I want to replace the old sloppy cuff with this new, much nicer cuff. So I have replicated the cuff, including the increases, and I have left my dark yarn attached because I'm going to need that to join it to the original mitten. And I put a cuff of waist yarn on here to hold my stitches for me. To make the substitution, I'm looking for my start of round. So that's my start of round. And the first round in the two color pattern is this green and purple. So that's where I need to start joining the new cuff. So I'm going to take the new cuff and put it over the top, thread it over the top of the old cuff, lining up the start of round. So that is my first stitch of the round, that green one. And here I am with my cuff lined up. And because I have my dominant colour, my left lower loud colour attached, I'm going to duplicate the purple stitches first. So stitch one of the round is a line is a green stitch. So I can't graft this one yet. So I'm going to take my dark yarn behind and come up into the second stitch as indicated by that white waist yarn. So I've skipped behind a stitch and now I can tuck that cuff down inside and I can duplicate or replicate that dark purple stitch there. I go back into the stitch I came from behind the next one, which is going to be green. And with this, I'm going to try and gather this to the same size and shape as all its friends further up the mitten. So now I can do the fourth stitch of the round. So that was one, that's two, that's three. This is stitch number four. So I'm copying the colors on the original mitten and I'm copying the waist yarn on the cuff of the mitten. So in other words, I'm actually grafting in place every alternate stitch. So I've gone behind a stitch, there it is, and now I can do the next purple stitch. And I'm going to work my way right around the mitten like that. Keep tucking my waist yarn cuff down inside and you can see the sort of alternate nature of those stitches. I want to make sure I keep missing one out and that is surprisingly hard to do. It goes so against the grain. I also need to make sure I stay um, sewing on the same round the whole way. So I'm sewing the top of the cuff to the base of, oops, let me see, the second you stop concentrating, I didn't miss out a stitch there. So back to where I came from, go behind that stitch. So I've got to have the side of that stitch, a whole stitch and the side of the next stitch. So four bars showing on the needle. And here where there are three purple stitches vertically, I've got to make sure I stay in the same round. 
One, two, three, four. Here's a tricky little spot. I did a knit one, yarn over, knit one, increase into the stitch I'm about to replace. So this is the stitch I need to replace. So I need to make sure that when I sew through that stitch, I sew through the exact path so that I will keep that increase intact. And then the stitch exits out here. So there is that purple stitch holding on to those increases. Get that waist yarn tucked down inside. There's the next green one. So this is the purple stitch I need to sew next. So I've maintained my missing out a stitch sequence. And it's this kind of grafting where waist yarn is revolutionary. You can't really graft every alternate stitch from a knitting needle. Now I'm back to the salt and pepper side. It should make it much easier for me to see where to sew. I'm actually going to be connecting to the base of each green stitch on the second round. Now, when I get to the end of this round, provided my cuff had the same number of stitches, as the original, and provided I haven't missed anything out, it should match up perfectly. If it doesn't, because I've got the waist yarn in place, I have the option to un undo all this stitching and have another go. That looks a bit odd there. I want to check that I did properly miss out a stitch in my edge. I think I probably made a mistake there. See these two are too close together. Yep, I failed to miss out a stitch. But by looking at it and seeing that the pattern had changed, I was able to spot it and I can come back and fix it. So I should have gone along one more stitch. That's what happens when you talk and sew at the same time. As you approach the end, this is where you start asking yourself, have you got it right? and we'll find out very soon. Back to where I came from. If I can't see the waist yarn clearly, I can stick my finger up underneath. So back to where I came from, skip one. It's looking good. So this is my final stitch of the round here. And this will connect to this one, back into that stitch, and I'm going to leave this on the public side for now. But I have successfully gone all the way around the circle, and I have united all the purple stitches. Now I have to do the green ones.